that God is in control, that is sin. So you have the three types of categories, the transgression of the law, knowing to do good and not doing it, and whatsoever is not of faith, it is sin. Now keep that in mind as we take this a step further into passive aggressiveness. Let's look first of all at the passive side. Okay? The passive side is what keeps people from confronting conflict and resolving problems. You with me? Okay? Look at dealing with problems directly. They don't do that. Passive-aggressive people do not do that. But what does the Bible say about dealing with problems directly? Look at Matthew chapter 18. Let's look at some of these this morning. Okay? Matthew chapter 18. Does the Bible promote a passive-aggressive way of dealing with problems? No, it does not. The Bible, and even Jesus Christ, tells us that we must deal with things directly. And you say, well, it's not in my personality. Well, guess what? Then you better get it in your personality. Because the Bible tells you to do it. Right? Right. Look at Matthew chapter 18 and look at verse number 20. Um, excuse me, I have the wrong reference written up there. I just caught that. Good thing I caught it now. Look at verse number 15. It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and, you know, the person that you really like in church because, you know, they can really help you. No. No. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, put a note on the refrigerator <laughs> with a snide little comment so that they get the point. So that everybody else can see that you're frustrated also. No, that's not how we deal with things in the Bible. The passive-aggressive behavior does not line up with the Word of God because it is a result of our sinful nature. Look at what it says. It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go. First of all, it does not say, wait. Second of all, it doesn't say, wait for that person to come to you and talk about it. Let me tell you something. I'll give you a little tip here this morning. Most people who hurt you did it completely unintentionally and did not mean to do it. Therefore, they are often oblivious that it even happened. Okay? That's why Jesus Christ says, Is there the, if there's a trespass, if there's a conflict, if there's a problem, you who received the hurt need to go and tell him his fault. Right? Amen. Tell that person Look what it explicitly says here in verse number 15. Go and tell him his fault between thee and a group of people in church so that you can get everybody on your side, right? So you can really hammer them. Go in there loaded for bear so that they can't wiggle their way out. No. No. What does it say? Go and tell him his fault between the, and the prayer chain. Because we need to have people praying for this person. Right? No. It says, go and tell him his fault between thee and him. And if there's any question about what Christ means by that, the next word ought to clear it up. Alone. Nobody else involved. Okay? Now, the way Jesus Christ wants us to handle our conflicts is in a very contained manner. Right? I have seen literally marriage problems in churches unfold and get exploded, and all of a sudden people start talking, and you know what they do? They drive that married couple apart. How do they do that? Because they make it impossible for that person to be restored. Because the other spouse goes and hangs all the dirty laundry on the line and lets the whole church know everything bad that that other person did. If you love somebody, I just read in my devotions this week in Proverbs that love covereth a multitude of sins. If you love somebody, you're not going to blab everything and every fault that they have. That's good. Right? My, my wife loves me. And I'll tell you something. She knows some things that uh, I don't necessarily want to hung out on the line. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Okay? You don't need to see my dirty laundry, and I don't need to see your dirty laundry. Right? We get it right with the Lord and move on. But what happens often in problems in marriages and relationships in churches is that one spouse, for one reason or another, can't stop from going around. 
and leaving all the dirty laundry laid out on the line, and they make it impossible for that couple to get back together. Because why is the wife or husband going to want to come back to a church where everybody knows every dirty little grimy detail about their life? So what does Christ say? He says we're going to deal with it directly, but in a contained manner. Okay? So what Paul is saying here to the Romans, he says, hey, let your love be sincere. 